we can call the meeting to order at 6 30 uh, p.m on uh, monday august the 16th actually the first day of the amol conference and for the second time in two years the AMO conference is being held virtually and we're all at home as opposed to this year being in london ontario uh, so this is a joint uh, combined committee meeting of the Committee of the Whole for Administration and Finance and Committee of the Whole for Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities. And um, what is going to happen here tonight is that I will chair the meeting uh, down to item 7C on the agenda, down to and including item 7C. At item 7C on the agenda, I will pass the gavel to the chair of the Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities Committee, and he will chair the balance of the meeting up to the mayor's report. So I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening, and I see we have uh, all of our volunteer community members here, and there will be a, uh, uh, a um, closed session following the open um, meeting. Um, so, uh, with those few words, uh, I'm looking for a motion to approve the agenda for the combined meetings of the two committees. Do I have a mover for the motion? You do. Have it moved by Councillor Cameron. Is, does he have a second, please? And Mr. Packwood, uh, that the joint. That the agenda for the joint uh, committee meeting be approved as presented. And uh, those in favor, please. And the motion is carried. So now I'll move to item three on the agenda, which is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest here this evening? None by me. No declarations, and the minutes will reflect the fact that there were no declarations of pecuniary interest. And now I'm going to item number four on the agenda, which is business arising from the previous committee of the whole meeting minutes. And uh, we'll deal with them one at a time, actually. So first I'm gonna ask if there are any questions related to the minutes of the uh, administration and finance committee meeting. I don't see anybody raising their hands. I'm going to make a few comments about these minutes. Uh, these minutes have been approved by council, and as such, they may record and reflect what happened at the meeting. But my concern is that there are a number of items in these minutes, and although they have been approved by council and council has to take responsibility for them. There are a number of concepts in the meeting, meeting minutes that uh, I have concerns with and all members of council should have concerns with. I'm not gonna raise them here this evening because the minutes have already been approved. Uh, but, but I would say that it is incumbent on all members of council to review these minutes very carefully and to point out errors in them. And uh, I accept my share of the responsibility for allowing these minutes to go through uh, council uh, as they did on the end of the month. Uh, uh, and uh, I'll accept that. Uh, but I do want to at this meeting express my concerns. So with those few remarks, if there's nobody who has any business arising from those minutes, that's the administration and finance meeting of July the well, I'll proceed then to ask if there's any uh, questions or business arising from the minutes of the Public Works Environmental Services Facilities Minutes of July the 19th. Are there, is there any business there arising, arising there from? Okay, none there either. All right, and so since there's no business arising from either of those, I'll move on then to the next item on the agenda, which is item number five, which is delegations and presentations. And I believe we have Mr. Holloway with us this evening. Yes, we do. And Mr. Holloway, I believe you're gonna talk about the Johnstown drainage uh, project, and then we will have a, an open discussion on that 
uh, item. As I understand, there you're also looking for further direction there. So you have the floor for now, please. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, we've uh, taken a comment from the previous uh, council meeting regarding uh, council's direction of the design. And we've reached a point, 60%, where if council's happy with the concepts that we could submit for permits and hopefully do a public information session and engage the public uh, within the community of Johnstown itself um, to get their input also. Um, we did one for Spencerville and it was very beneficial. Some things were brought up that helped. Um, but at this point, we we're looking to see if council is comfortable with the budget, um, with kind of the budgeting for the project and the, the general design concepts. Six uh, percent. We're sitting around just under one point four. Um, that's got some contingency built into it. Um, but at this point, I need to know if that's all to the township and to the council, or if I should look at uh, reducing the design, some components of the design. Uh, right now, there is curb throughout the project. Curb um, and gutter. Curb and gutter. That does, we could not eliminate all of the ditching um, because there are some internal drainage systems within the village where um, some people have some uh, swales that go on private property in between properties that require uh, us to collect that water. So there is still some minor ditching going on. It wasn't completely eliminated, but uh, the residents at the south end of the project would be very happy they will not have that that really deep or significantly uh, deep ditch anymore that will be um, primarily filled in but there will be some still minor ditching within the village even with curb and gutter um, this is to help address also <coughs> some drainage issues where the road is higher than some adjacent properties and they don't have an outlet so we had to also supply some outlets to some private homeowners so how would you like to to proceed with this uh, as, as it is, sits right now, um, I'm assuming that you're going to draw our attention to some individual issues on the sheets that have been circulated to us. I think more uh, uh, I'm looking for is the council comfortable with the budgetary number? Um, the main thing for me is to get the permits into the Ministry of Environment and Climate Commission climate change so as long as there's not any major issues with the budget i can go ahead and put that in and then in parallel i can do the public information session um, and regarding minor issues uh, design issues with individual homeowners and houses um, that is probably better addressed in the public information session um, with the homeowners directly pointing out any issues they may have uh, and again at this point i think i'm looking more broader uh, are we happy with potential budget implications um, that, with that figure. Okay, so let me see. Uh, let's just talk for a minute about the budget. Now, I've got these large sheets here um, to show up. It's called option one. Is there a budget sheet? That, did I miss a budget sheet? That uh, I may not have gone out of the package. I do have a large one behind me. Basically, it comes out to a 1.4 billion. Yeah, but so we don't have where is that? We don't have no, no, no. I might not have that in the, uh council package. I apologize, but, but I did not come out earlier. Um if you want me to go through line by line item, I can go through that and if council feels that there's they don't want a particular item, we could look at deleting that item or I could give justification of why it's in there. I'm uh at a bit of a loss as to how to proceed here. Um so what you're telling us is that if we look at this Johnstown drainage option one, which is Sophia Street from County Road to North as far as second, That's right. and Mary Street from County Road to North as far as second, That's the right. total budget is 1.4 million. Do both roads with curb and gutter with underground drainage and storm scepters at Highland County Road 2. Okay, so that that is both roads, curb and gutter, both sides, right? That's correct. All right. Now I'll ask the, sort of the first leading question because I mean anytime we're spending one point. 
1.4 million kind of have to think twice about it. Yeah. Is it possible to have a design which includes curb and gutter on only one side? And if so, what could, what effect would that have on the budget? Apparently the curb takes up 150,000. So if you eliminated half, so a quarter, so about the equal distance, so eliminate a quarter of 150,000 for each, each side you want to eliminate. It's, uh, so we're 45,000, 45, somewhere in that range. Um, well, you're, you're saying you're saying that the curb and gutter treatment is what? How much? One hundred fifty thousand for yes, and that's for both streets on both sides of four. All right, so half of that would be half of one hundred and fifty yeah, seven five thousand. Yeah, if you want to save that much. So the savings on one side, savings to eliminate curb and gutter on one side would be roughly seventy five thousand. Yeah. Now you still have to um, give an explanation. We do delete on one side at the public information session as why we would do that uh, public information session versus the other side. Uh, now, um, Mary Street might be an easy, um, an easier sell on the east side of Mary uh, Mary Street. There is not much development uh, towards the north end. Um, the street, I would, I would say, is pretty urban on both sides or similar. Okay, so a work. Um, so there's not so much as a, a so much a presentation here as there is um, really leading into item number six as well, which is the discussion items, and and um, so maybe what we should do is if we look at uh, the briefing that we have in front of us. As the next item on the agenda, there's about six items there, five items that we've, we've been asked to turn our attention to. Uh, but of course, the first item at the top of the list is budget. And then if you're looking at page 17 of 40, the other five items are final design, which would be affected by budget, the public meeting, well, budget implications and costs, that's sort of wrapped in together then, sorry, my, my, my bad, that should be at the top. Tendering, and then contract award and construction timeline. So I, I think maybe what we'll do is we'll basically add item six on the agenda, unless you have something you want to add, we'll just okay. open it up for discussion and then you can just stay where you are and answer the questions. Yeah, I think that, that would be appropriate. I mean, this is a, our council, you guys are very engaged in the project, which is good. So this is normally conversations that we have probably with the public works department. Um, but this is great that a council is involved in a particular project. And that's why I brought here to answer your individual questions about certain items if you have any questions about that. Um, this is still 60% design. There, there may be some issues brought up in the public. Like I said, the public information session is very important. Um, the local homeowners always bring stuff to our attention that we miss. It's, they, they, they live there, they're going to have knowledge that we don't have. So there will be some design changes after the public information session. For sure. Okay, now do, do, do those potential design changes affect the permitting? They don't necessarily affect the permitting. An example might be there is a property issue raised with Spencerville where it was determined that part of the road was almost on the property line. Um, so we brought in some extra design stage that we had to get a legal survey to ensure that we weren't entering on a private property. Um, so yes, they do have potentials, potential to change the design and the permitting. Uh, I would I would still be comfortable putting in the permit today if council uh, was, um, not, I guess, happy as the, or, or, or receivable or accepting of the design as is or the, general concepts, uh, deletion of curb and gutter is not really going to change the permitting as much. It's the storm sewer and the, the kind of the, the price range. If you tell me that you want to lose 50% of that budget, then I might have some issues going to permitting. But if you're, if you're looking at saving 150,000, you know, 75,000 here or there, I'm not as concerned to go to permitting right away. And that is kind of the critical path I'm right now is getting that MOE application in and in line and getting them to review it and approve it. Okay, and, and you're saying you said 
submitting it right away. You do that before the public meeting. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't foresee any major issues coming from the public meeting that would affect that MOE permit. All right, I'll open the floor for discussion here. Mr. Hawley uh, will answer questions, and you see in front of you on page seventeen the issues that are, are basically up for discussion. So rather than for me to try to focus it on one of those four items or five items, uh, just tell. Mr. Hall, which one you're asking questions about, and we'll start the discussion. Before we start, is it okay if I go back and take a picture of the budget? I can, I can, I, I can give that to uh, to the public works and then issue that to everybody. Maybe we could take a different step here. Uh, is that available on eight and a half by eleven or eight and a half by, or eight and a half by seventeen inch that the clerk could make copies and just put it on into the tables here? Everybody should I think it matters to us. Two or three minutes. Sort of. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just allow a few minutes for copies to become available. Is there any other general question I can answer this time in regards to certain individual components of the design due to the technical aspects or? Well, let's just talk for a minute then since, you know, budget discussions are relevant. Uh, how long would you see uh, between now and the, and the public meeting? What would be the reasonable length of time? And do you have a proposed date for a public meeting? I'd have to talk to the public works department, I would assume, in the next two to three weeks. Okay, but at this point, you don't have a proposed date. All right. So basically, all you're looking for is uh, that is that we're amenable to, to holding a public meeting. Yes, that you're comfortable enough with the, the, the high level budget number and the, the concepts that are proposed in the drawings that you're comfortable with me proceeding to the public with those. With those numbers, yes. Well, not, those I, would, numbers. I wouldn't give those numbers to the public. I would give that design to the public and let them review it. Um, the budget estimate itself is not given to the public. It is, it is generally just given to the public works department. Um, the individual budget numbers is not given to the public. Why is that? Um, a number of reasons. Uh, it is a budget. It's, it's, it's unknown at this time if it'll come in over or under. Um, sometimes residents will look at particular items that their neighbors getting and they may not be getting and look at the budget number associated and assume that they're entitled to that same budget number going to bring in front of us. Um, they may ask for the deletion or, or addition of additional items based on what they see as savings within the budget that they can find themselves. Um, but isn't the larger issue that the public's paying for this? The public is paying for this, but it is at the direction of the Public Works Department of what components of roads are being fixed and what standard is being brought up to. So they they could ask for a number of things that maybe not, are not in the budget. Um, it's not to say that it's not a bad idea to give those numbers, uh, individual pricing numbers. Also, it gives the contractors. This is going to be public information that we may not want to give to the contractors, so they might use that as the lowest possible bid they put in. Well, in fact, they're class D estimates, are they not? They are. Um, but again, it's it's not not typical to give out budget information to um, to public 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 information sessions. A general overview of the budget number. I have seen done multiple times, um, but not an individual breakdown of each item. Oh, I see. Okay. Like the global picture. The global picture of a, of a general idea, of, and that is only at the direction of the public works department. They said it was okay, and they said that, that, that we could release some kind of a ballpark number. And yes, we will we give that information, but that, that 60% cost breakdown, I, I've never given that to the public information session. Councillor Cameron wants in here. Uh, yes, I, I know there are in, in the village of uh, Johnstown, I know there are some areas where people are pumping their sump pump out into the into the uh, ditch. Yeah. Are there any on Mary Street or Sophia Street? That's what the public information is sessions for. I do not know. So we would hope to engage the homeowners. We'll try to pick up as many as we can. Um, but this will have to just generally we try to tie them to the storm and generally want to. 
I'm going to point right on the drawing where their sub pump line is. Uh, I'm going to have to talk to Gord and the public works department in what direction they want to take with that. Some municipalities do not want that hooked into their storm system because of liability issues. They'd rather it be pumped on the lawn and then go out into off their lawn into the ditch because there is issues if that line gets crushed within the uh, township road property that it may be the, the township's fault. So some municipalities don't like you hooking them up, some do. It comes down to a policy issue at that point. But we do like homeowners to point them out to us. And we do like to let them know that uh, it, they should let us know if it's not working and they should check it right after construction just in case it does get crushed. Because I have seen issues where maybe it gets crushed and we don't know it's there and if it's backed up into a house before. Yeah, some of them are quite blatant and they stick right out. Some, and some are not. Right yeah. there. Okay, thank you. You've answered. I have two questions. You've answered both of them. Okay, so Councillor Dillwell wants it. Yes, Mr. Collins. I don't see uh, that oil separation on Mary Street going across number two here. It's on, on the diagram. It's on the end. It should look like a big circle. It doesn't look like a manhole. It's a uh, it says MH. I see the MH on Mary. Yeah, at the end, which is a manhole. And I don't see it crossing highway number two. Sophia. And that's supposed to be crossing highway two. But do you not use the county, the county uh, culvert to cross highway two? We do. You just missed the connection on it. It's the proposed 1800 manual. Uh, there's an OGS as it comes to the south there. And there should be another connection. See, he's got a northeast, uh, northwest, and southeast. He's missed that southeast. Uh, Culvert on is just on, on the drawing itself, but the OGS is on the west side, and he's got it denoted there as a proposed OGS. He's got it with a CD ring. Thank you. Is that the DICB I'm looking at? You said West C West. Uh, it's got it's in bold. It says OGS. Oh, yes, yeah. oil, oil bed separator. That's the correct term. But where is yeah, I see it. It's just if you look at that piece, that big man all in the middle of the street, there's a large pipe heading to the. It's hard to see on the whole block. Yeah. If, if you want, I can show you right after here on the, on the larger drawing, or I can bring it up to you if you like. Yeah. No. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. Where? I don't know. I see what we get. Oh, yes. That's true. Right there, the circle. It says with CB lid. What's CB lid? Cash base. Sorry? Cash base. Oh, cash base and lid. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Grant. I see that we have the, the budget here in front of us. So, again, the floor is open for discussion here, all items. Yeah. I'm getting much take up here. Uh, Mr. Robertson. I was just wondering what the significance of the 60% pricing at the very top. Uh, 6% design. My drawings are 100% complete. Okay, so it's not pricing. It's, a... it's an estimate. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't foresee much change at this point. Uh, the major items are the pipes. The, the area of curb and gutter, um, the oil grid separators themselves, there's, there's not much change in that. Um, what may change is supply issues or the price of granular could be a, a major issue in the area. That, that is more likely to have, um, have uh, uh, to affect the pricing, but it, it should be should be pretty ballpark, you know, 10, 15 percent either way. Um, it also depends how busy contractors are. Yeah, but for the class D estimate, you're basing this on well, what are your class D estimates based on? They should be based on time of materials, really. No, we base ours on material because we do so many jobs that we have material prices for everything laid down. So in civil, we base everything based on the material laid down. Um, on a building project, you are correct that you would do a more of a time material and you would do a, a traditional takeoff and how many man, or, man hours to install each unit. Um, but since this is a heavy civil project, you do it based on the unit prices. So the unit price to place a piece of pipe, the unit price to lay a ton of asphalt, the unit price to put in a meter of curb and gutter. So what unit prices are you using? What vintage? Uh, this 
this year we're doing using a blend of the town of Westport and I believe we're using some from your was the town hot hot mix and um the other one, South Pontiac. Oh, I see okay so that's the basis of your class D. yeah and then de depending on your location if you're farther away from an asphalt plant or you are further away from a major center we may adjust those based on also um just the historical data if we find like we, we do projects on Wolf Island where we have to add 15 20 percent to our estimates just because of the, the travel time right so the town of Westport it would be pretty similar to here um you are actually pretty close to a lot of services uh you have an asphalt plant right in Morrisburg you have some competition from Cavanaugh, Tomlinson, Carson's all have plants on the end of 416. Um, you have a lot of heavy civil construction companies that are, are fairly close to here, so you get a little better pricing than I would say, like let's say Brockville, or north, more to the west. Okay. Floors open again, gentlemen. Okay, Mr. Packer. There's no way for topsoil to start. There should be an item for top oil and sod. Uh, I will add that. It won't be a major item. Um, top soil and sod. Well, it depends. That's another question. Do you want to go top soil and sod or do you want to top soil and seed? Um, so that that that's another another issue that we could run into depending on which one you want to go with. Um, sod is substantially more expensive. Um, I mean, you might get down for a seed, you might be around three dollars a year square. Top soil could be around 15 with the uh, sod, sod, sorry, versus C. So that's not on the SMB to be added. Okay. Just one other one. Um, driveway repair items. So we are just cutting where the pipes are right now and where the removal. So we carried some of that price in the removal of the existing culverts. But we can take a, a deeper look on that. That is always one that is underestimated, yeah. actually. We run into problems where we underestimate the amount of drywall removals because the other issue you put in is you have to chase it back. Um, Quite a distance away. Sometimes, so that is that is a harder one to estimate for sure. That's all I have. Others? Okay, what's the uh, what's, uh, time frame for the <laughs> construction on it? How long do you figure? To construct it or to go into tender? Well, when the tender, what is the time frame of construction? Once the tender, how long? Once the tender closes, um, you can write your contract in, in such ways that you can restrict the time frame for, for construction or you can extend it. I would recommend extending it uh, just so you get a better price. The contractor gives more options to work longer on it and frees up some of his time. The major timing when to put this to tender right now is the MOE approval. Um, you don't want to put any pipes in the ground for approval. Uh, is a fall tender still possible? Yes, um, but I wouldn't have a completion this fall. I'd let the contractor decide completion of early summer next year. But there is still as possible for construction this fall, and you could still leave awarded it, and you might get awarded that and not even start construction until the spring. My recommendation would be to tender it this fall for completion in summer of 2022. But all that's dependent on when we get the MOE approval. Um, I have seen this college before we try to put in pipes before MOE uh, approval. It's not recommended. Um, the MOE is not uh, very receptive to that if they, they find out. Um, but as soon as that 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 is kind of the critical path item now is their their approval of it since it is a treatment system. It's the the you know no on bridge separator. Yep, and if that's council correction and we got approval for that, those could be installed. Again, uh, you would get better prices waiting for it to do it as one construction project. Um, you're, you're doubling up on the bonding. It means you have to remobilize at least a couple times um, if they're just installing all the grid separators. Um, but that, that is a possibility if you just want to install the one unit. Another issue we run into sometimes where you do a piece of project like that is you might get one contractor that installed the oil grid separator. And you'll get another contractor that comes in and does rest pipe, and then he blames delays or anything else. You can see on that original installation saying that that original contractor was not um, to do uh, correct job, didn't do a good enough job and, and did his work incorrectly. Um, it, it'd be my suggestion to tender as one, but yes, it is a possibility you could tender this to separate. 
No, I wasn't thinking of the tender too. I was thinking of more of the tender being issued that uh, the way on pitch separators would, would have to be done this fall and the rest of the contract finish next year. Got to that. You got to have something to show something to done that. That'd be the first stage, would it be? All this construction put them in first? Uh, it, I don't. We wouldn't. I don't like telling the contractor how to do his work. Um, also leads to issues. Um, generally, yes, if I were building it, I'd start from the bottom and work my way up because um, you can work around problems. But generally, we don't like to tell the contractor what sequence to lay their pipes in or anything like that because as soon as we do that, uh, the town and the engineering firm takes responsibility. Um, if you're concerned about uh, showing some work with this fall, I would say the public information session. And even if you pay the contractor to put up information boards that construction will be occurring whenever it does, would be able to let the public know that something is occurring or going to happen. Um, this advanced notification uh, signage on the end of uh, Sophia and Mary might be a, a good way to do that also without paying for the well, good separators to go in early or telling the contractor to do them early. Maybe advanced notification that construction is being occurring within so and such a time frame. But I hope we get enough public input at the public information session. We'd be able to answer those questions directly to the public. Okay, now I'm not seeing any other hands coming up for questions. So I'm going to try to break this down in, uh, in the following manner. Uh, I'm going to try to deal with a number of issues that have been outlined on the briefing note there on page 17, maybe in a little bit different order. And um, rather than trying to capture this by means of motions, I'm going to be looking for consensus and um, announcing consensus as I see it developing. If I misread the table as I announce what I think to be consensus, I want you to correct me um, because that will have to be reflected in the minutes. All right, so first of all, let's deal with the issue of whether or not to hold a public meeting. Are we all agreed that definitely the, um, the engineer and the staff should uh, mount and hold a public meeting? Yes. That yes. basic concept. Yes. All right, so we have a consensus, and I'll be clear that there has been a consensus arrived at to that the that the engineer and the staff uh, will hold a public meeting to outline uh, this this project. All right, so that's settled. Uh, the answer there is yes. All right, now do we have a consensus around the fact that this project will con see, uh, continue? with curb and gutter on both sides of the streets. Yes. yes. One, two, Absolutely. Yeah. three, right. four, five. All right, so as I read it, there is consensus that the design will continue and the project will be constructed with curb and gutter on both sides of both streets, full length as described. I'd like that captured that way in the minutes as I vote using the words that I've used. All right, now that leads us then to the inevitable conclusion that we accept the price, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna call them the class D estimates as presented. Understanding of course, that, as, uh, that these class D estimates come from the source that the engineer has already indicated, which is this year's, well, I'll phrase, rephrase that. These class D estimates arrive from unit prices obtained from the 2021 construction season. Have I stated that correctly? Yes, at least. All right. So the, the question is, and do we have consensus that the budget will proceed on the basis of these class D estimates? Understanding, of course, that nothing is etched in stone until these things are tendered. Deputy Mayor, one. Two, two quick questions to Kevin, if I may. Um, Kevin, when uh, you were asked earlier about the number seven you, or uh, culvert removal, though replacing driveways and cutting back, you said that usually they're grossly underestimated. Yes. Um, how much? It's the asphalt that they're paid driveways. That's that's what uh, that's what affects it. Um, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. Yeah, a small magnitude, 25,000. On, on this magnitude, job of 1.4, you know. Well, it's not a lot. 
Um, no, but it is an item that we consistently gets over. It's going to run over, and and uh, not included in this budget was topsoil and sod. That's right. What what would on a project this size? What would that budget line typically be? I mean, I know I'm asking you for a guess, but uh, that this number is not going to be this number. We've, no, we've already figured that, that much out. Yeah, it's it's going to go up and down. It's going down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't say it going down. Well, it, if you do see it, it would go down. Like, uh, it, it's not, again, not a big ticket item in, in the $35,000 range, depending on what you want. So it's safe to say that we're going to add 60 or 70 to that number. There's also a contingency, you didn't know it's 50% on the bottom mm -hmm. for items that have missed, like those ticker ones we just discussed. Right. Um, uh, which may or may not already be included. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's it's, it's a high level estimate and, and, and another thing is um, if our pipe price comes in $50 less a meter, that's those, the pipe pricing, the asphalt pricing, the oil grid separate, those, those big items will drive your project. They'll yeah. determine. And sure. another thing that, uh, to remember is if we receive a budget number that is unsatisfactory to council at the time of tendering, it doesn't mean at that point we can't look at um, the, the tender design itself and look at cost saving implications of the contractor. I have seen that done. Uh, yes, quite in, common. Uh, in quite common in the past. If something has come back that's unpalatable to the uh, the council, we can go work with the contractor and try to reduce the price. Yeah. Generally, you work with the lowest price contract. Yes. Uh, yeah, I would. I would. I would strongly recommend you take the lowest price one based on yeah. Yeah, and then negotiate from there. If if the, if the, if if it comes in over budget and the council is uh, if the number is is is, is unreasonable to the council at that time or the public usually the public works department uh, we will try to get it within budget at that time after the award of contract. All right. So the issue that's on the table looking for consensus is the is the acceptance uh, for for present purposes of proceeding with the class D estimates as you see in front of you. Do, do we have consensus that we have an understanding that that is a rough, rough estimate of budget? Yes. Am I seeing a nodding of heads here? Yes. All right, so I'm, I'm declaring that we have consensus on that. That's the basis on, that's the financial basis on which this project is gonna proceed. Looking for saving, looking for changes from, from a number of different sources as we proceed through the process. All right, now, the next thing comes to uh, permitting, uh, which is basically the, uh, the purview of the engineer, but uh, do we have consensus around the fact that, that the engineer will proceed to the permitting process uh, forthwith? We understand that. In other words, he, he will apply for his permits now. We have consensus on that issue. Yes. Uh, one question. I've got one. Go ahead. Question. Uh, how long would the permit take, approximately, from the ministry? Still waiting on Spencerville. Uh, I've seen anywhere from a month to three months. Just depends. Depends what building or December. So we may not even get it this year. I would assume we'll get it by the end of this year, but I can't. I'm not. Jeez. It's the ministry. I'm not. I don't, no, no. I don't have, I don't have yes, a good answer. Yes, go ahead with the permit. That, that's, that's why this, this council is, sorry, sorry to interrupt. That, that's why this council is so important that you were happy with the, the general overview so I could get that in. Yeah. So I get that in line. Get that in yesterday, please. Yes. yes. All right. So we have general consensus that the engineer is going to proceed to apply for his permits now. Forthwith is the number, is the, is the word that I use. All right. So we have consensus on that issue. Yes. All right. Now. The next thing, and, and I think, uh, 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 Mr. Hall, you have to be a little bit more definite with us, and that is the tendering process. You've recommended uh, that we proceed to tendering this fall. Um, can you proceed to tender without having the permits in your hand? I would highly, highly not recommend. Because if you did issue that contract to the contractor, no, I'm not talking about issuing a contract. Um, I'm talking about issuing a tender document. So even issuing a tender document, you would have a close on the tender document, and then in your uh, tender documentations, you only have a set number of days that that tender price is good for. So in saying that, I still do not recommend tendering unless you have MOE approval. 
um, because there's only a set time that their price would be good for. And if you go past that set time, they could claim delay and they could change their, their submitted price. Yes, I know. But on the other hand, your tender document can clearly say construction to start no later than March the 31st and prices to be good through to the end of construction. That is, that is correct. Um, but if you don't give them a definitive start date, you're going to get uh, high, higher prices. You're not well, why would you not give them a definitive start date in a tender that's being released this fall? Oh, you're saying that the, the work is to start in March of next year. Well, I'm, I'm looking for ways to resolve this whole concept of timing. And uh, so the first thing, of course, is that we can't proceed at all with the timing until you know that you've got a tender document in your hand that's ready for release. That's right. Okay, so maybe I should tie that down. How long until you have a tender document ready for release? Uh, after the public information session, we <laughs> finish the design fairly quickly in two or three weeks after the public information session. However, the risk is the MOE comes back and maybe disagrees with my design and makes me change pipe sizes or locations. Um, and then that would mean my tender would no longer be valid as written. So that would be risk that I, that I generally don't recommend taking, but it, it can be done, but is not recommended based on not getting those MOE comments back first. All right, so let me see if I can go back a different way to approach this. Do we have consensus around the fact that this will be a 2022 project, construction project? I think you're all seeing that. It not, doesn't look like there's anything going to happen any sooner. No all right. So we do have consensus around the fact that this will be a 2022 project. Now, do we have consensus around the fact that this will be an early 2022 project? Let's say start no later than March the 31st, using that as a kind of a target date. We have consensus at that. And I say that as opposed to issuing a tender, which leaves it open to the contractor to set his own start date. I'm trying to tie this down and get a consensus here that the tender that's released will have a definite start date in it. Councillor Hunter. Well, I don't think we can uh, specify starting in March. I think you're here. Same Russian roulette there, you got half load season on. Give me another day. 24th of May. That's the generally when the half loads come off. Okay, 24th of May, start date. So I'm looking for a, a, a date to, to signal in the tender document, no later than date. If I may, usually you have a completion date to drive to drive these contractors. You it's very common to set a completion date, completed no later than. Um, would be another uh, avenue for council, which is already written the contract that we use. We give them a completion date. Um, so, for example, the town of Westport. Okay, give us a recommended completion date. Uh, I believe the town of Westport just finished their entire downtown um, with a. In, they started in the spring and they had it paved and open for Canada Day. But you could do earlier for a smaller section like this, end of June, and force the contractor. And that would force them that's, to start. Geez, that's good. That sounds good. I could live with that. It, and that forces them to start whenever they so choose, and they know the bidding times beforehand. Um, it, it, I have to agree with Councillor Hunter. Hunter, um, it, it's very difficult to give them a start date, but a completion date is very easy for us to give them. That 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 is that is. And you're recommending thirty. The suggestion is thirtieth of June. We have consensus and around that concept. That's paved, completed. Um, maybe maybe some minor official work after, but that that is very very doable yes. and. And, and okay, do we have a consensus around yes. that concept? Yes. Okay, I think we plus, do. Plus, plus, end of July would make me a little more comfortable. That way, if, if anything goes wrong at all, you've got 30 days, 31 days to, to lean back on. Yeah, but why give him that no, flexibility? June 30th, thank you. They're going to come in and ask for extensions anyway if they run into weather problems or something. So <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a target date in the tender. Good. Right? Target date in the tent. Target date to tender. You're right. However, yeah, I understand. Tender. Okay. All right. So I think we have consensus there uh, around the target date of June 30th as a completion date. Yeah, and I'm, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry for interrupting again. That, that, that makes me feel much more comfortable writing the tender in that, in that manner. Okay. Now, so that 
does away with things like start date and working days and things like that. What concepts have I missed here? I think I've dealt with all the concepts that I have in front of me from the briefing note and from your um, from your presentation. Question. I, if I've missed anything, I need guidance. Go the, ahead. The only the only thing I'm I'm questionable about is the is the finishing up where we do the the either the siding or the seating. We had trouble on Walker Street with with that, and I want it very very clear what we're going to be what's going to happen there. Are we going to have good seed? We're going to have good sod, and the, and when it's completed, it's within the time frame. So that's that's a question um, for sure that I can answer for sure. We deal with that contractually, um, working with the township staff that we write into the contract where we, we tend to have holdbacks, and we do the sod and seed inspection under deficiency list. Um, that leads to contract management, and um, it'll either be our engineering firm. Or an external engineering firm, or the township staff that will be doing that uh, contract administration. But that that's that that comes down to not the writing of the tender. Um, I'm sorry, it does come partly into writing the tender and putting the proper specifications in there to ensure that's done completely, uh, completed correctly to the satisfaction of the township. And, and and that is a common thing we see. So we do have inspections and warranty periods built into our contracts for that reason. And for for CV and sod and. And I also want to make it very, very clear. If you have to come back and do it again, you're going to come back and do it again. Okay, but now, now there's three more issues on the table that haven't been discussed, and I'm going to deal with them one at a time. And, and Mr. Holly has already indicated to us that there's a, a major unit difference between seed and sod. So I need a consensus around how he's writing that tender. Is he writing that tender for sod placement and... Uh, I don't know what term you use to bring sod to maturity, but it's not just the laying of the sod. Generally, the contractor is bringing it. Responsibility is to bring it to maturity. No, that's done by a sod. So, well, no, that's a subcontract. So, just just to be clear, there's there's two items you can do for restoration work. There is uh, seed and topsoil, and there's sod and topsoil. Sod is, is, is significantly more expensive than seed. Um, the contractor, when they come in, if you ask for sod, it's going to look like a manicured lawn and they're going to have to water it and they bring in the, the small components and they patch it together. Seed can look like, generally it's a mulch machine um, and it's the uh, spray that they spray on top of topsoil. Um, and again, there's cost implications where sod is more expensive. However, it is more, um, the residents are generally more accepting and in urban areas, it's generally, it's generally um, more specified to use sod than it is seed. Um, however, if you're looking for cost savings, um, seed is, is cheaper. Okay, so I'm looking for consensus and discussion on that. I think the, uh, I think the uh, price, if I'm not mistaken, board would be Roughly thirty thousand dollars for sign. And, and, and just to interrupt again, this this is this is something that we could change at the time of tender. If you see you didn't like the sod price, you can know, you can go back to see and ask them for a change order and change that particular unit price. Um, it's it's something that, that that can be can be changed after award. Um, my recommendation would be saw it, see what price you get, and then if you don't like the price, um, we could ask the contractor to give the price received. All right, we have consensus around that concept. So, okay. okay, the initial it will be written as saw it if well, opportunity to opportunity to discuss. All right, so it'll be written that way now. So we have consensus on that issue. Am I correct? All right, so we have consensus on that issue. Now, you brought up the question of uh, contract administration and contract supervision. Are you not, is that not part of your mandate that you have at the present time? Uh, sorry, not, not currently the contract to be signed, but again, that should be something in the future that does not need, need to be decided tonight. That's something that you should go back to your public works, um, public works manager. Will this should come up with your budget at budget time, budget time for next year. And he, he should present that whenever whenever it does go for tender, he should come up with a business case for what the appropriate course of action would be. So this budget that we have in front of us does not include contract administration or supervision. 
That was correct. Those two are separate, of course. All right, well, uh, the, the engineer's recommendation is that that uh, issue of administration and supervision can come later uh, 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 as a result of a recommendation, of, as a result of a staff recommendation. So do we have consensus to let that issue lie uh, pending a staff recommendation? Okay, we do. I see a nodding of heads all around. Consensus on that as well. I just have one, one concern. Mr. Mayor, at the present time, we do not have a clerk's supervisor. Uh, and, and so we don't need to deal with that issue tonight, as Mr. Hawley has already indicated. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Now, I think I've captured all the items. Hello. Uh, I keep finding new ones. <clears throat> Mr. Pack. Um, a public meeting, We're going to have that before the final design. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the concepts aren't going to change that much, and the public input is needed now to yeah. the final design. So I need those sub pump lines. I need locations of I've got drainage issues on my front lawn. Um, um, and hey, Mr. Holly, we buried a pipe here back 30 years ago. You might want to put that in your tender somewhere. I, I need that input from the public now to complete the design. Um, it's at a point now where the general concepts are there. Uh, for most people, they will see the curve, they'll see the cross sections. They'll ask, they ask general questions about what's going to happen to the front lawn, at the height of the ditch, in, 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 for instance, and I can answer those questions. But yes, now is the appropriate time to engage the public. Because there could be some extras in the contract for that. Could be, and this is the, this is the place to catch catch those extras. They're not they're not large ticket items, but they're the ticket items that, that are better to be um, be proactive than reactive uh, during construction. Um, generally, we might even have that public and right session early at this point, but this is a pretty basic um, design, and six uh, percent seems appropriate. When can we host this public meeting? I will need to talk to Gord. Uh, sorry, um, yes, Gord after after the meeting, and we pick a date. Um, that's uh, um, that both me and him are available for, and they'll have to find uh, appropriate um, combination for the meeting. Uh, I believe the Spencerville one we had in the fire hall here, so I'm not sure what is available in Johnstown. That that'll be that'll be uh, the public works department will work at the, the public finding a appropriate location and having it having it soon. Over the next two or three weeks. Two or three weeks. That that would be my goal. Again, I need to talk to the. Public Works Department and pick an appropriate date and make sure that uh, um, again, Gordon and Dave are available, that I am available to be able to be there and answer any questions the public may have regarding okay. the project. Okay. I think that, uh, in my opinion, that basically brings all the issues to a head. We have good general consensus on all of the major issues. And unless there's other um, things coming forward, I, I think we can move on with our agenda here. So thank you very much, Mr. Holly, for coming this evening and uh, walking us through this. I think this project is getting closer all the time. And uh, we'll see where we stand in, well, as a result of the public meeting. Thank you very much. So now I'm moving on then to item number 7A on the agenda, which is the capital project uh, status update. And uh, have the larger sheet here. And you have this larger sheet if you found it at the back of your packages. Um, and so now the floor is open for discussion on this. This is an information only session or an information only item, I should say. So it's an opportunity to raise questions with the, pro, the process of, of our capital works project. And um, so the floor is open for questions regarding the progress of these projects. Anyone first? Councillor Delaval. Uh, yes, uh, to chair to her. CEO, uh, we're having problems, I see, with our paving, I guess, uh, because of the locates, are they just that busy, and it, how far are we going to be behind? 
on these projects. Uh, through, through, through the chair, uh, I'll, I'll have the director of operations uh, jump in if I, if, if I miss anything, but I think the delay is a combination of uh, Ontario one call being behind and uh, I'm, I'm going to say a delay on the contractor in submitting for those uh, locates. Uh, I did uh, notice that a couple of those uh, particular streets uh, do have locates uh, completed on them but now at least the painting is there so I'm anticipating that it should not be uh, that much longer. No direct collaboration to anything further to add. But through the CEO the chair yeah I just spoke to Kevin Holly about that to sort of check into that with the code of paving. Uh, Mike spoke to them on site uh, on Commerce Drive last week and they are behind a bit on their uh, on their contracts and CEO had mentioned um, all of uh, Ontario one call locates are behind. They're actually sending out uh, notices with with the locate information after they receive it. That basically they're running on it. So typically that standard locate is supposed to take five days, but it's taking longer than this year. Are there questions with regard to this? Yes. I'm assuming that uh, this is I'll, I'm coming to you, but sure. I'm assuming then that that question that um, Mr. Uh, the Councillor Gillibaugh brought up that relates to Anne, Judy, Commerce and Rooney. Are there other items that are affected by that? First year. Uh, where is that in the just, list? Just, uh, just, yeah, just above Stormwater. Right. Okay. I got it. Yeah. All right. So go ahead, Councillor. Uh, yes. I'm just wondering with the uh, waterfront phase one and phase two, um, what other, uh, what other, uh, Items may be coming forward on that on both phase one and phase two. Uh, where are you looking now? Which one? Uh, which item is so it? Phase one, phase two under economic development pathway work is completed. Invoices to fall. Uh, benches, receptacles are additional items to follow. But I was under the impression that the benches and receptacles were paid for. To the tune of twelve thousand dollars. So we know that. Is that included in these figures, or is it yet to be added in? Through the chair, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, have the treasurer speak to that briefly. So that the, uh, the twelve thousand has uh, it was out. It was as of July first. This, this report, it, it, they are included in those values. Um, but there are still some, there is still budget room to uh, to look at other things such as the potatoes um, or other things we discussed as additional items that are going to be added. So I think there is those budgeted values on there. I see. And I just just one other just one other question, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, to through you to Mr. Spencer. How many benches are we going to have? Uh, to the chair to uh, Councilor Cameron. Uh, five benches is what we have, uh, and then we're looking at replacing the big table or the pavilion area. We want to do that walkway as well, upwards of uh, 10 additional picnic tables that will be purchased and delivered sometime in the next three months. Yes, okay, and I see, but are there five, in, five benches installed now, or are there still some more to be installed? Uh, I believe there's still two to be installed. Okay, thank you. And uh, any more doggy stations? Through the chair. Um, yep, two down there, I believe. Yes. Uh, well, I ordered it for now. Okay. And certainly, I mean, if, if there's a need to have more, we have put one at each end, thinking that was like halfway for someone starting at the Legion, going either to the left, thinking we put one at each end. Yeah, you've got, one, see, you've got, uh, you've got one at the west end and you've got one at the uh, midway point at the east end. But I, I was just curious whether or not we were going to have any more. And I, your answer is satisfactory. Thank you. That's all. Mr. <clears throat> well, Mr. Pack, to the chair, if you're ever curious looking for the one call guy, we'll find him on the top of the hill here every day of the week when the midway building. He's either in the outer office, which we call White Road. On the top of the hill. Guaranteed. What's that now? One call person that does locates. 
He is. He's on the top of a hill there. That's his office. He's by the little red and white building. He's in his white car. And we call it, he's in he's in here, he's in the inner office. And when he's up by the gates, it's the outer office. And we'll have a joke with him about that also in a while. Not attending diligently to his duties, is that the implication? No. Because a lot of times he's playing on his computer, but if you ever need him in an emergency, that's where he is. Right on the main street. Pardon? Right on the main street. Yeah, right up by the red and white ticket booth for the fairground. Take a drive by there during the day and you'll see there. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Thank you. Scott, where uh Mr. CEO. Uh, no, no, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of that. We're back to some of the material. One call will get here. I just mentioned it because it came up. Yeah, I understand. But you can see the, the problem that it creates with the program. Mm -hmm. and so I appreciate you mentioning it. Well, uh, I'm going to go another direction here and just let that take that advice under advisement, if you don't mind. Uh, Councillor Hunter. Whose uh, responsibility is to call for these locates? Is not COCA's responsibility to look through these locates? That is, through the chair, that is correct. It's contractor's responsibility. I have a real problem with this. We tend to just set out these, con these pavement contracts were, were supposed to be started by the 1st of June, weren't they? I believe that's what they initially fetched was the actual June. Yeah. And they said they were going to be delayed until July. Now we're, it's going to be September before they. I have a real problem with contractors when they, they tender these at a, a low price and then don't do the job when they're supposed to. Do it. Like a, to try to put it off on the locate, it's their responsibility. We we awarded these contracts back in March. They could have had the locate done any time after they received the contract. They could have had the locate done. The for us to receive to that, for us to receive that as an excuse, I find very offensive. Actually, I, I agree with you. I find it quite offensive. And then to hear Mr. Packwood's comment, I. I'm overly offended. I have a problem because when we and to bring it up, we put a, a tender for a port that we had a major paving job done there. The contractor that got it not only had it done two weeks ahead of time, he actually started ahead of when he was, was and moved in and did it. And we had other good contractors that received the tender and were honest and come right up and said, we can't do it within this time frame. So we can't, we, we'd like to tender, but we can't tender it in this time frame. Luckily, the, the, this contractor is one of the ones that tendered it out there. So I have a problem when we award contracts and I don't live up the, in the time frames. So we put it out early to try to get a good price and, and get it done before we get into the busy summer season of traffic and stuff. And now we're going to be into fall. So, so I mean, we depend on we depend on staff to deliver these projects. Was there a a start date or an end date on 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 Ann Street, Judy Street, Commerce Drive, Rooney Road, and First Street? Was there a start date or an end date in the tender document? That's the issue. So through 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 the chair, I, I I would certainly expect that there was a completion date included within the tender. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what that completion date can was. can it be looked up. Um, the the schedule that we received from 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 Coco was that they were starting the last week of July. It would be completed by August 31st. So our contract administrator will be following up with the contractor. To express 
the uh, displeasure with respect to uh, providing a schedule and not adhering to it. So staff is working on that situation. Councilor? Well, I think that when we, not partly our call, if we have okay attenders, if it was, I think we have to be a little more diligent in, in putting a time, a start time, time on it and a penalty clause in there if they don't follow, follow through and get it, get it done. Well, we just went through that discussion with Mr. Hawley and we put an end date and on a start date. So, okay. Uh, other questions with regard to this? And I want to go back to the benches for a minute. Uh, are, are, is everyone aware that we have a request from a, from a senior citizen to provide a bench that he's having constructed as his own expense? Is that, has that been related to, to uh, I guess Mr. Spencer's in charge of this project. Who's in charge of this project? The benches. That would be my okay. You're, are you aware of that? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Um, now, are there any other questions with other projects on this um, on this sheet? And so I'm um, just going to ask one to the treasurer. The um, year-to-date expenses uh, that we sh that show in that column there. Have you received? Uh, this is as of July the 31st. Have you received any of the outstanding invoices that would finish up or provide um, more information in this year to date call? Um, no, I, I took the uh, Friday the 31st and So in other words, if the invoice was received. Yeah, yeah, because our system will recognize a, a bill that's going to get paid in August disbursements as in July 31st. Okay. All right, so the next update probably won't be then until 30, uh, September 30th, is that? Yeah, well, it'll be the quarterly, uh, third quarter, and that will be coming in September 25th. Right, okay. All right. Are there any other questions with this, uh, Councilor Dillwall? Thank you, uh, the Chair. On, on getting back to that uh, waterfront project, so are, are you telling us that we're going to have six benches now, and not five bought by us? I, I don't I don't understand I don't know, but I, I I've, I've got a note here of five, and I didn't know whether the one that's being supplied by the senior at his own expense. Uh, and I relayed that earlier uh, to the CAO. I didn't know whether it was one of the five or not, or whether it's going to be kind of squeezed in. I know it's not probably going to be the same shape style as the others, but I can't really, I can't really turn down a senior. No, but what I'm saying is, you uh, the CAO, does that mean we're going to have six down there? Or are we going to have five plus your own? Five plus, yes, thank you. So it's five plus six all the way. Correct. Five Thanks. plus one. Okay. We, yeah, we, through, through the chair, we have <coughs> five, and we'll install five, and there's a one off installation that will come at a later date. Good. Thanks very much. But the pad will be there. It will be constructed on the pad. Okay, so if there's no other uh, discussion there, or no other questions, I'm going to move on then to item number 7D, which is an upgrade to the postage machine. And uh, that's the next item. And uh, where am I here? That item is accompanied by. Briefing note. And the briefing note has a recommendation. And the chair is looking for a mover and a seconder to action the recommendation. I think there was a chance to read it. I'll move, but I have one question. All right. I have Council or Deputy Mayor Deschamps moving second. the recommendation. And I have a and Councilor, are you seconding? I'll second it, but I have a question. Councilor Cameron seconding. Okay, so first question to Deputy Mayor. 
Uh, yeah, so through through the chair to the CAO. So 66 month lease. Uh, last one was 10, 10 years. Was that lease 10 years or did we just have it for 10 years and bought it out at the end of the lease or you know that? So uh, through, through, through the chair, I'll have the treasurer speak to, uh, speak to that with respect to the uh, previous lease. The, the original lease started in 2012 and it was a 60 month to five year. Uh, after that period of time, we went to a um, what they called a rental, which is really was just an annual um, renewal of the, of the lease without a contracted uh, term uh, at the same rate as was uh, the original. And so at the yeah, so um, at the end of sixty six months with this one. That option to continue, or are we just going to go into a new one? Do you think? Or um, haven't actually seen a specific agreement, lease agreement. They've only yeah. just given the pricing at this point, so I would want to get an, an actual agreement to attach the one lot when the market comes close to the time. But okay. there are certainly lots of options that are being developed, say, with a small buyer or just continue with the same lease that it's right now. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mark. Yes, um, for the for the machine that we're buying, uh, no leasing. Or leasing uh, that we're one thirty nine or one twenty nine ninety five. Um, is that machine? We brought up this issue here a little while ago, where the staff was doing folding and sealing or whatever it was. Is this is this machine going to do that? Take that job away from. No, through the chair, this is only a postage machine. It doesn't have the, uh, the capability of another folding. Um, I'm actually uh, also in, in discussions with both uh, vendors um, to, to, to discuss either a purchase or a lease on another folding machine. Does the other one at 166 do the folding? No, okay. no, they're just straight postage machines that uh, just adds postage to the front end. That's a good one. That's all I have, but I'm glad you're looking into that. Thank you. I'm really happy about that. Thank you. That's all. Okay, and I have Councillor Hunter and then Councillor Dilwa. I know I'm very pleased with the Councillor Hunter. Through the chair, the treasurer, we were leasing these. What's, what's the value of these machines to buy them out there? Uh, I wasn't provided a, a purchase price on this particular folding type of machines. Um, I, I do have a Price on the other older machine, but I didn't ask about the price of the other one. It's interesting to know what it is to own instead of paying $130 a month. I think uh, most of these leases come with, uh, most of these leases come with servicing agreements, don't they? Yes, they have a service plan. Included plan. in the lease? They have a service plan included in them. Yeah. Whereas if you buy it from the company, you have to have a service plan. I know we always found that uh, postage meters weren't <laughs> strictly because of the fact they weren't all that reliable. You had to, they needed service and oftentimes they had to be replaced. The other aspect is the technology. I mean, we've got pretty good with uh, 10 years, uh, left, left out doing $50 a month for, for 10 years, but uh, the technology is certainly more advanced and after another five years, we'll be getting another addition to the road. So you don't want to set the machine that's out of Absolutely. Okay, any further questions with regard to the recommendation? If not, I vote to call the question on the question. Those in favor of the recommendation? Yes. Motion is carried. And for now, I'm on item number uh, 7C, which is the commercial banking services agreement. And again, there is a briefing note, and you have a copy of the agreement uh, as uh, laid out by RBC and there is a recommendation so because the briefing note is pretty clear 
chair's looking for a mover and a seconder to bring forward the bring recommendation forward. I'll have a mover. Yeah. All right, I have Deputy Mayor Deschamps moving again. Does he have a seconder? I'll second. And he has Mr. Robertson seconding. And so now open for discussion and Deputy Mayor first and then Councillor Hunter. Um, uh, through the chair to, to Mel, this one, the proposal, our proposal offers to extend the contract term to of three to five years with a two-year ex extension. Um, it's dropped to, to 0.6. Is there a possibility of going with a shorter term on that in case interest rates rise? I mean, I don't think they're going down long term, and it seems like we have an awful lot of money tied up in, in these uh, accounts basically making no no interest. Um, that term, I'm assuming, is locked in once we say yes to this for that three to five years. But it's prime less, right? Prime less. Yeah, so the prime will change, the extension will change, so then you can, you're still getting whatever the prime, okay. the prime changes, so you can just add. Yeah, okay. But the, but the key is in the 1.85%. One, one more. Pardon? One, one. That's my concern. This would we possibly get a better read? Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of for Hunter. Are you finished there? Yeah, no, it was, yes. Okay. Well, we've been back with RBC here for quite a while, a number of years ago. Years ago, Edgeburg Card, Edgeburg, then now Edgeburg Garden was with RBC for 20 years or more and they got just like this 0 0.10, 0 0.05 difference in the prices kept crawling up all, all the time. And we went to a tender with uh, TD Bank for four, four or five, five years. And, and on the tender process at the time, Royal Bank did drop down the TD still beat them by Better than one percent total revenue over the whole whole tender, but the difference between the first year that we signed with with TD and our RBC saved the township on twenty five thousand dollars in the first year. In the first year, the next time they tendered, with RBC jumped right in a, in a, and undercut TD. TD again to get the business back, and I think we're just. Here's to me like they're playing the same game and just gradually creeping stuff up all the time because then they're just going to keep renewing. Well, I'd like to hear more discussion on this because I spoke to my financial advisor today about this and uh, I have real concerns with Prime West 1.85 yeah. because I think there's 10 basis points on the table here someplace. I don't know whether you had um, detailed discussion discussions with them or whether you've had any discussions with them about uh, the relationship or the potentiality of, of going to a tender? I mean, how was the dis how was the discussion conducted here? Can you give us some details? Uh, the chair, the uh, RBC uh, had a conversation with the, our commercial marketing rep. Um, the market, the interest rate is, is reflective of the market right now. RBC is holding um, pretty close to, to keeping their, their interest rates um, a little less, you know, a little more conservative and, and not as rich as some other, other areas. Um, the other aspect to the contract is they're not making any changes to any of the um, costs associated with doing business with them. There's, you know, they waive a lot of the, of the suite service charges for uh, Many of our member uh, member people, the li library is now on our on our contract. No charges for checks or deposits. The port itself is on the contract again. All of their uh, activity, commercial activity, there's minimal charges um, associated with, with this contract. So the, that that's kind of offset with the, the interest rates. So typically, uh, on average, uh, in terms of charges, might be about four hundred dollars for all nine accounts to actually do business with RBC monthly. That's pretty reasonable. Um, so the, the basis point is, the 10 basis points uh, in terms of interest is, is minor in the sense that we're, we are saving a lot of the bank charges 
for all of our uh, all of our accounts. And so, in your opinion, it outweighs it. Um, RBC is very responsive anytime uh, there's any issues, uh, either with online banking or uh, dealing with vendors, um, you know, wire payments, that type of thing. I can I can call this particular representative, and she she will respond to me within the hour. And usually it's either a phone call or an email. Well, a lot of times it's straight a phone call. They're, they're very responsive. So um, getting good service is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I feel that the for the you know that ten basis points. I know that it, it is it was concerning. That's why I actually asked originally the contract came in as a five year uh, with a two year renewal, and I said. I don't really want to go to a five year. I'd rather do a three year like we've typically done on, on the basis that potentially, you know, the interest rate starts getting better and they can offer us a better rate uh, the next time around. Okay, so I had uh, Deputy Mayor, I had Councillor Hunter, Councillor Cameron. Yes, uh, I, I, I concur with what the Treasurer has just said. Is this on these sheets, there's just a ton of things that the charges have been waived, and a lot of the charges are very minimal. Um, not always is the best price the best, and I, I, I would be comfortable with the recommendation, Mr. Mayor. Further discussion on this item? I always like to kind of push these guys a little bit. Thank you. The way I push them is threatening to go to tender, but uh, I'm not negotiating here. Uh, Mr. I think the other side of the coin is they're, they're more, you've invested a lot of money with them that they're using. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that, to me, that's part of the, it's, it's, that's part of the whole uh, investment strategy with them and, uh, you know, they don't seem to be giving much ground on the, on the service charges. Well, according to the treasurer, though, they are waiving quite a number of the service charges. Of them in there. Yeah. Service charges can, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not deep familiar with that degree of detail in our, in our working relationship and uh, where, where I know uh, what our service charges are, but I know that I know from previous experience that service charges can be, uh, if imposed to the full extent of what the bank lays out in their in their menus, they can be onerous. But on the other hand, I think the thing that bothers me most about RBC is number one, they closed their branch here locally. That's the first thing. Number two, they told us that they wanted to sell the building with the ATM machine in the building. And they promised us that it would stay in the building. And after two years of working to try to find them a buyer that would take the building with the machine, all of a sudden they turned turtle as soon as they had a buyer and wouldn't grant the machine or the continued um, placement of the machine in the building purchased by the new buyer, which hurt him pretty heavily. I think he's trying to find an alternative, but at this point hasn't had a, a hasn't had a, an uptake from any private company that will place the machine. So, uh, you know, uh, I don't know who you deal with, who your commercial manager is, but I mean, at one time I had a pretty good relationship with Mike Bellibo, who was the VP for this area that was responsible for the closure of the branch. And uh, well, anyway, I don't, I don't want to get involved in negotiations at this level. So further discussion, otherwise I'm gonna call the question on the recommendation. Hearing nothing further, I'm gonna call the question on that recommendation. Those in favor of the recommendation? Aye. Motion is carried. All right, uh, so now I'm gonna pass the gavel if I could please to uh, the chair of the Public Works Committee and he will chair the meeting from this point on to the mayor's report. Just for one moment. 630 yet? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the uh, uh, Public Works uh, Environmental Services and Facilities uh, part of the uh, 
part of the uh, uh, meeting tonight, and it is uh, Monday, uh, uh, August 16th, 2021. And first on the agenda is number 7D, which is the Barclay Municipal uh, Maintenance uh, Billing. And uh, there is a recommendation with this, and this is uh, passing the um, passing the charges on to the beneficiaries of the uh, of the drainage. Um, can I have a mover for the recommendation, please? Uh, Councillor Hunter, second. Deputy Mayor, thank you. Uh, you've had a chance to read the briefing note. Any questions or concerns? Yeah. Go ahead, Councillor. Uh, thank you to the chair, to the CEO. On this Barclay, I, I don't, the Barclay is probably during maintenance billing. I, I don't even remember being here going on three years at the Barclay Municipality Drain in uh, South Dundas, I guess it would be. How many people in our township is going to be billed for this? Through the chair, I'm not sure if the treasurer has that. Uh, um. Kind of look at that schedule in my head. Um, through the chair, probably um, about a dozen owners. I think there's a couple of owners that have a, a couple of people that have a couple of properties. That have. <clears throat> ten and a twelve for ten thousand dollars. Yeah, it's minimal. The the billing is going to be relatively minimal. And where is the Berkeley? Uh, the Berkeley Municipality Drain. Through, uh, through through the chair in and in and around the Kane uh, Sapper Room area. Thank you. Just want to clarify something. It, the, the amount billed to to the thirteen properties is is eleven hundred dollars, though not ten thousand. It's ten thousand in in the account, yeah, right? Ten thousand will be billed minus the uh, eleven hundred, which is to the township. Correct. Okay, yeah, my bad. Okay, any, any, any other questions or concerns? Uh, Nomi, is there anything else you would, would wish to highlight here? No, once the bylaw comes uh, at the end of the month, uh, it'll indicate where somebody will outline in the uh, trying to use the same kind of bylaw as we used uh, in other drainage, so that it's fair to all uh, benefiting owners that they're going to use the same way for improving the assessment drainage. Good, thank you. Okay, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That is carried. Thank you. And this brings us now to the Twilight Run event, uh, Windmill Road closure. And we did have a presentation uh, from the uh, organizer uh, on this a uh, couple of weeks ago. And uh, let me see, Gord, are you going to uh, highlight this for us? Certainly, Mr. Chair. We were approached from the uh, <clears throat> The Twilight Fun Friend event uh, organizer. Uh, the purpose of this was to bring forth a request from the organizers of the Twilight Fun Run for a partial road lane closure of Windmill Point Road. The Twilight Fun Run event is sponsored by the Port of Johnstown in collaboration with the Fort Town Night Run Committee. It is tentatively planned for the evening Saturday, September 25th, between 6 and 8 p.m. Five kilometer run route starts. Uh, the parking is on the port property, and the, the run starts at the port um, and will uh, eventually head west along North Lane at Windmill Road. Runners will turn around at the historic battle of the Windmill site and return to the port. Uh, the route is subject to change pending cargo movements at the port, and the organizers will keep the township updated with any changes. The sponsors are seeking support. Work from Medford Cardinal Council in terms of permission for a partial road closure of Windmill Point, similar to past years for Fort Town one night. The event of organized might go uh, door to door with the pamphlet to explain the event and how it works. Uh, so no volunteers were indicated had no radios were positioned along the Windmill Road and they to provide possible <coughs> communication traffic to close the road. So no concerns have been received from affected residents. Recommendation the council recommends the council, or sorry, the committee recommends the council support and approve the request for partial road closure on Windmill Road for the Twilight Fun Run event on September 25th. Okay, thank you. Thank 
to uh, thank you, Mr. Shaw. Um, before I call for a little uh, any concerns or questions uh, with the briefing note? Hearing none, okay. Could I have a mover, uh, please, for the recommendation? Mr. Packwood, could I have a seconder? Mr. Robertson, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. That's carried. Now we come to item F, which is the uh, EOLC Regional Commuter Transit Pilot Project. And we do have a uh, briefing note in front of us. And the briefing note also has a recommendation. And this is for a, uh, a river route uh, bus line uh, between Rockville and Cardinal, Cardinal and Rockville, um, for only $5 to ride. Now, I'm assuming that that is $5 one way and $5 another way. So it's coming back, that would be. Through the chairman, that's correct. Thank you. Um, so the uh, recommendation reads that committee recommends that council receive the pilot project overview and authorize staff to sign the EOLC Regional Commuter Transit Pilot Operating Agreement. And I believe it's not in the recommendation, but I in the briefing note, it, it says to an upset of $10,000 will be funded through the modernization fund. Um, could, I, uh, could I start by having a mover for the, uh, rec for the recommendation, please? Uh, Deputy Mayor and the Seconder, Second. Councilor Gillibaugh, thank you. Uh, okay, so I believe. Uh, Dave, do you want to uh, uh, highlight the, uh, the program? Uh, certainly, Mr. Chair. Uh, so if you recall back in, uh, in February, Council passed a resolution uh, committing to uh, participating in the uh, project subject to uh, several conditions. And one of those was to that uh, staff come back with a uh, sort of overview of the uh, uh, project. <coughs> So it will it will run Monday to Friday, uh, 5:30 a.m. to 5:30 p.m. Uh, it will start by 5:30 a.m. at uh, the sort of the box box stores, uh, superstore. Uh, work its way down number two, stopping at a number of the uh, of, of the businesses, and in particular in our area, it will it will stop at the Giant Tiger Distribution Center. Uh, we also uh, have a, a stop uh, right, right in Johnstown uh, in, in and around the school, and uh, then it will uh, it will also stop at uh, Village Square Mall and uh, Grady on uh, Canada, and then make its uh, loop back to uh, back to Rockville. So. Thank you. Any uh, any questions or concerns, Councillor Gillibrand? Uh, Thank you, Chair, to the CEO. Are we going to get this uh, out here and, um, and advertise it so people are going to be aware more than on our website? It's going to be in the paper, paper something. It's like to get it out, you know, as Bill saying is. We'll say, oh, it didn't work because so nobody used it. Well, nobody may not know. I don't know. So, so through the through, through the chair, uh, the the marketing uh, team has has been in contact with uh, with a number of the uh, uh, the major employers along the route, and uh, so they they, they are uh, reasonably familiar with it. And yes, we we, we will be intensifying the marketing on uh, on this route. So thank you. Thank you. Hearing no others, could I have a mover for the recommendation, please? Oh, did I move it? I did. I'm sorry. That's sorry okay. about that. Um, well, I have to make my mistake. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Gary, thank you very much. Now I'm going to call for. Um, for uh, council inquiries and notices of motion, and then I will uh, kind of turn the uh, gavel over to uh, Mayor Sino to continue the 
meeting to start with his mayor's, mayor's report. But before we uh, before we get to council inquiries and notice of motion, I just wanted to advise everyone that we do have a closed session meeting tonight, uh, and it has it has been updated. So I'm going to inform all of the advisory people that are here in the room that you will not be present for the closed session. Uh, thank you again uh, for your uh, for your time today. Um, okay, now any council inquiries or notices of motion? And uh, Councillor Dill, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Dilly Chair. Uh, back last year, I think Mr. Shaw, we asked you to do the chair to Mr. Shaw or the CEO. Uh, uh, a price on snow plow in Wexford and Windmill Point. You came back to us stating that Prescott was interested, but we didn't get a price, right? Could we, do the chair, could we look into maybe pricing it for 2021 2022 this year? So, to the chair, we will, we, we will continue our conversations with our neighboring municipalities to look at some options. Thank you so much. Anything else, Councilor? No. Okay, looking, uh, looking around the room for any other uh, notice of motion or inquiries. Seeing none, thank you. Mr. Mayor, please accept the gavel. Thank you very much. So, my report is going to be very brief. I just want to inform the council of a couple of things. Number one, I've had a number of complaints. From Spencerville about uh, the cannabis odor odor that's coming um, from along Bennett's as people walk along Bennett Street, they find themselves uh, offended uh, by the odor that's coming from a growing operation in that neighborhood. I won't mention the address on Bennett Street. Um, I've, I've tried to determine uh, the extent of, of uh, concern around that issue and not being able to get far with it, but I'm, I'm being inundated with requests to do something. And uh, it's being point, I thought always up to this point in time that this was a federal issue that the federal government had total control over this product. But it turns out that municipalities, in fact, do have some uh, say, especially as it pertains to odors. And so does the Minister of the Environment, by the way. And the Minister of Environment, very carefully, they tell us, controls the odor coming from uh, large operations such as the one at Purple Farms or the one at Terpene Farms that's about to be, um, about to be constructed. Uh, although I'm told that even though the ministry says that there's no order to come from those sources, it still does happen. In any case, I find out that North Grenville has a bylaw which seems to address this issue. Now, I'm only just reporting this to council now to make council aware of the fact that it may or may not become uh, an issue to the extent that um, I ask council to approve um, in the work that would be required to um, search out and bring forward a draft bylaw. I won't do that at this point. I know the staff is extremely busy here these days. And um, so I'm not going that far, but I just want you to be aware of it. And then the last thing I want to talk about just briefly is that AMO started today. And uh, there were, uh, of course, a number of delegations now United Counties had um, basically, well, I'll put it this way, um, the, the Township of Front of Young and the Township of Elizabethtown Kitley had one delegation with one of the ministers today, uh, urging the minister to make the grant system that the province administers um, extend it so that it would cover fire halls, the construction of fire halls. So that was the, the gist of their presentation to the minister. Uh, it was very well presented by Mayor Burrell of, um, of Front of Young, excuse me, of uh, Elizabethtown Kitley uh, with Mr. with War, uh, Mayor Haley with him. And I attended as a show of support for those gentlemen and in their issue. 
And the, the minister seemed to take their issue rather with, with a fair amount of interest. The second delegation that was held this afternoon at 320 was with the minister, the solicitor general regard, regarding our problem, getting the provincial offenses courts up and running again. And just to let you know that United Counties carries on their books $14 million of unpaid fines. Uh, now, many of that is what you would call historical fines that we inherited from the province of Ontario when the province um, um, offloaded, if I can put it that way, the operation of the provincial offenses courts to the United Counties. So United Counties operates that court system for the benefit of all 13 municipalities in South Grenville. And you know, $14 million that we're carrying on our books is, is an onerous amount of money. And it's increasing by well over $100,000 a year with our inability to collect fines. And so the thrust of that recommendation or that delegation today which was presented by Mayor Og uh, Ari Hogenboom of Real Lakes. The thrust of that was to say to the minister, we need more help here. First of all, there's a real lack of justices of the peace in the province of Ontario. The minister said, well, I've just appointed 41 new JPs. Uh, I'm depending on the chief justice to tell me that he needs even more. When he tells me that he needs even more, we'll go through another round and appoint more JPs. But in addition to looking for more JPs, we're looking for a lot of other improvements in that court system to get our provincial offenses courts up and running again. Both, that's the court that affects the charges that our bylaw officer uh, lays charges against. And we can't get charges in front of that court for at least six or eight months, probably longer. There's something like, in our briefing note, we said to them something like 3,000 outstanding charges in the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville. And the direction that we've got so far is that these charges will be brought to the court system in the order in which they were, um, they were issued. So charges that were issued way back in March of 2020 probably will not see the light of day in 2021 and maybe not even in 2022 because of the way the court system is working. So just want to let council know that that was the thrust of those two. Now, there are two more uh, delegations of, that the United Counties will be making and two more that the, uh, the, the our township will be making. So I'm just going to tell you what the times are and they're all tomorrow. So tomorrow at 10 o'clock, the township of Edwardsburg Cardinal uh, through myself will be meeting with the Honorable Todd Smith, the Minister of Energy. And the topic is the Natural Gas Expansion Extension Project. And we'll be speaking to Mr. Todd, Amer uh, Minister Todd, who is the new Minister of Energy. And he's taken over that ministry from uh, the Honorable Greg Rickford. Uh, so we'll be asking for some definite things there. And the staff has prepared a very comprehensive briefing note, and it's been circulated to all members of council, I think, has it not, Rebecca? So, yes. yes. All right. The next one will be the next delegation will be at one o'clock tomorrow, and it will be the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville speaking with the Honorable Stephen Lynchy, Minister of Education, about a number of issues relating to the operation of our, I think it's our child care system. And then the next delegation will be at 2 20 tomorrow afternoon with the Minister of Long Term Care. The Honorable Rod Phillips, and we'll be talking to him about financing uh, for the Maple View Lodge uh, expansion in Athens. And let me just say to you that this, uh, this long-term care bid build in Athens, which will approach now close to $60 million in our, as per latest estimates, is gonna really put a heavy, heavy burden on the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville because we'll have to carry that mortgage until it's paid off. And just so you know, the way it's paid is that we upfront all of those costs, the, to the total is $60 million. 
And then we borrow that money from some source, let's call it Infrastructure Ontario. And the province pays us back so much per bid per day over the next X numbers of years. And we're expected to make those mortgage payments on the basis of this daily per bed subsidy that we get from the province. But we know on the basis of the work that we've done so far, that that daily per bed subsidy that we're going to get from the province is gonna nowhere near approach the annual payments that we're gonna to have to make against that borrowed money. And we're going to have to subsidize that through taxpayers dollars to, at this point, I don't wanna use a number, but it will be a, a heavy, heavy number and perhaps even more than we're paying for long-term care right now. I'll just let it go at that. Details are in this presentation tomorrow. The last delegation will be tomorrow afternoon at 5.15 with, and it's the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal again, meeting with the Honorable Nina Tangri, T-A-N-G-R-I, who is the new Associate Minister of Small Business and Red Tape Reduction, responsible for <clears throat> the job site challenge. And we'll be meeting with that minister at 515, <clears throat> basically as an introduction to uh, the, 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 uh, the Cedar Grove site that we've nominated and our problems that we're having with infrastructure in Ontario. Now, <clears throat> members of council are welcome to be here. I'll take all of those meetings here in the chambers. And <clears throat> whether or not you've been um, registered as a delegate, you'll at least be able to hear the conversations if you want to be here. And I'll be here for them all. So those are that's my report, Mr. Mayor or Mr. Chairman. There you go. Excuse me. No, that's my report. And that, so right, you, right, right. but it's actually the idea that uh, I do have a question regarding the long term care. When you say you're paid daily per bed, is that whether the bed is used or not? Um, that's an interesting concept and I, I can't answer that concept if you could uh, let me know i would yeah, appreciate yeah. it uh, i'll try to I'll, I'll review the briefing though but I, I, it seems to me that it's per bed per night whether it's occupied or not but i can't say that for sure okay. uh, Mr. Mayor, getting back to the grant uh what grant are you talking about for the fire department including fire officers well you may know that one thing of significance happened this past week first of all the gas tax fund has been renamed yes. and there's a new name for it now. It's the community Canadian community building fund. Building fund. Community it's building it's fund. And I think under that new name, fire fire um, fire halls are eligible. That, that, that's correct. Right. But they're not eligible under some of the other grant programs that the province operates. And that was the thrust of the of the uh, of the delegation. And the federal gas is federal, so this is a potential issue. So it's not yes. On the other side. Yeah. And the interesting thing about the name of that new fund is that the word federal is not in it at all in any place. Which I find interesting. It says Canadian. Canadian. Is, it, is it Canada? Canada. Sorry. Canada. 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 Community Canada. 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 All right, so is there any other questions? Okay, no, I'm, I don't have any questions with that. I just have a question about uh, moving on to the session. Go ahead. Uh, we're done with the answer. Yeah. Okay, so. And, but there is a question period, a, a general question period first. Or there's nobody on Zoom. Okay. And there's nobody. Okay, on continue. Zoom. Then I'll wait until yeah. before we end the closed session, but I want. No, I'm about to call the motion to win the closing. Okay, session. so there were no changes to the agenda. The agenda I have on my desk has 11A. It doesn't have 11B. It doesn't have 11B. We didn't move to amend the agenda. The chair has made it clear that there's an extra thing on here and the committee members aren't allowed on there. I'm just concerned about which motion we're using. The so sheet was passed why it was an update to each, uh, each councillor. Yes. Before the meeting started. And then the agenda wasn't amended. So I was, I'm assuming then that we're going with 
the original motion, not the revised motion. No. Okay, so now I'm in a problem. And the, the clerk and uh, the CAO have pointed out to me that this is a problem. I should have caught it at the time that I asked for approval of the agenda. I didn't catch that. And so you are correct. Uh, there are uh, this this motion to go into a closed session uh, was not um, signaled at the time that the agenda was approved. You're right. So I can proceed in two ways. I can either proceed with the will of council uh, to entertain this motion for a closed agenda with two sessions, uh, which I'm prepared to do, or alternatively, I can go back to the original motion, uh, which is in front of you, which is a closed session with a single agenda. And if that's the will, we'll do that. And then what I will do is I will call a special meeting of council for tomorrow night. I have no problem doing it that way. What's, what's I think tomorrow, what's, what's my minimum time for calling a special meeting of council? We would give it enough to call it now. Big pardon? We would, it really doesn't give it enough time for us to prepare an agenda and have a special council meeting tomorrow night. I would not be able to provide notice to the public or any of the newspapers. The only thing I'd be able to do is post it on our website. Okay, what does our procedural bylaw require? It, it's silent on that. However, it does note that um, meetings and agenda packages should be provided to council at least three days in advance. Okay, but we can waive the we can waive the notice to council if all councillors are aware of it. Uh, through the chair, it is best practice to provide more than less than twenty four hours to the public. Okay, so fair enough. So then the earliest meeting I could have a special meeting of council would be Wednesday. Is that correct? And we're all here Wednesday for court anyway. And we're all here Wednesday for court anyway. What's the difference of uh, doing the time I'm sorry. Following the procedures. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. I was under the impression that the mayor could call a special meeting at any time. There was a disaster that happened. He could call a meeting without without notification. This being a closed session, why do we have to notify the public? That's my problem. The, the, chair, well, the public doesn't attend closed sessions anyway. No, but through the chair, the public still needs to be made aware that the council will be going into closed session for specific items. And yes, the mayor can call a uh, any type of meeting, emergency. Well, I wouldn't be proceeding uh, as I am right now if I didn't think this was extremely important. However, I'm prepared to uh, be flexible here. And if the uh, meeting is going to be Wednesday, it'll be Wednesday. It'll be Wednesday at, I'll say, 5 o'clock. No, meeting, court meeting starts at 6 30. And uh, Perhaps we should have a little bit more time. I think we will probably more like 4.30. Okay, all right, what's your will? I just need to hear from members of council, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, members of council, uh, give me your will. Uh, Councilor Hunter, what do you want to do? Yeah, thank you for meeting Wednesday, I think so. I don't think any deputies are required to proceed with. Okay, I'm certainly not available Wednesday at uh, four thirty on short notice uh, ahead of that, uh, so I will not be here at four thirty. But I am in favor of you know, following procedure moving forward. Four thirty Wednesday, fine with me. I'll be tight. I'll do my best. Okay. All right. Uh, so all right. So the motion that we'll deal with then is the motion that is. Um, original one. Pardon? The original one. The original one, yes, if you would, please. Uh, just a second. Just, just one thing. Seeing that we're only dealing with the first the first uh, section, the original section, there's no reason why the advisory people cannot stay for that. No, uh, you're correct. Looks like you're staying, folks. Unless... Uh, go ahead, uh, Councilor Ron. You're going to show. Deputy Mayor, you're going to show. Committee proceed into closed session 824 in order to address a matter pertaining to section 239 to proceed to pending acquisition of disposal of land by the municipality or local boards, specifically at the square land bank job site challenge. 
sir. Okay, those in favor of the motion? And that motion is carried. We'll have a five minute break. Okay, Councillor Hunter has the motion to arise from the closed session. So, so the mayor just a closed meeting and committee is now adjourned and the open meeting is now resumed at 8.47 p.m. 8.47. Okay, Councillor Hunter has the motion to arise from the closed session. Okay, Councillor Hunter has the motion to arise from the closed session. Okay, and so now the uh, now the motion to adjourn the meeting, then, right? Yeah, uh, you have to report everything first, though. Uh, yeah, so the mayor just provided a briefing to the committee on the uh, negotiations with Infrastructure Ontario for the Edwardsburg Land Bank and the update to the Ontario Job Site Challenge Division. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter. The committee does now adjourn. Wait. Yeah, it does. I have the motion for right. So moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter. The committee does now adjourn at uh, eight forty-eight. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. Committee stay.